The title of the, uh, of the uh, sermon is, I'm still in God's waiting room. I'm still in God's waiting room. And I thought, Lord, I don't really want to say this. And I said, Lord, I, a few weeks ago, Pastor Mark asked me to, to speak. And uh, I, I felt the Lord say, look, I want you to give this, this word. And I said, oh, Lord, who wants to know about waiting? Um, I don't know about you. How, how many of you like waiting? Raise your hands. Do you like waiting in traffic? Oh, a few of you do. Okay. Well, most of us, I'm sure, don't like waiting. You don't like waiting in the doctors for an hour, two hours. Um, am I the only one? But no, no, praise God. Well, yes. Waiting is not something that we want to do, is it, really? Let's be honest. Um, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for your presence here this, this afternoon. Father, we thank you. I just pray that you would quiet in our hearts and give us revelation in the short time that we have. The time is precious, Lord, and we need breakthroughs. We need desperately to hear what you're saying. And, and Father, we need to change. And Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in the waiting room, we can sometimes feel we're in the Lord's waiting room. We can feel overlooked, forgotten, frustrated, uh, even unloved. Um, it appears sometimes people have their breakthroughs and, and it's like, God, where, what about me? And, uh, and sometimes the Lord can seem so far away and unfair. Let's be, let's be real today. Amen. Life is tough for many people. And Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Say to your neighbor, take heart, the Lord has overcome the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when we have to wait for something desperately, you know, something that we really need, we really want, it's not easy, is it? And it can be challenging. And... Uh, Many, many, many Christians, we, we don't wait. And we just try and fix things um, and work out our own abilities, our own understanding, and we basically mess up. Look at what happened with Abraham and, and Sarah. And I'm sure all of you remember that story. And the outcome is usually poor. You know, I believe the Lord wants us today is to help us understand from his perspective why we need to wait, why you need to wait for his timing, his purposes. And I will detail four main reasons why it's in our ultimate best interest, why we have to wait for the Lord. Hallelujah. And coupled with this, I will show you the seven Ps that will help us wait for the Lord with the right attitude so that you get your breakthrough in due season and in due time. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's look at some definitions and quotes on waiting. Um, you know, Venita Rendell Risner said, this is the most precious answer God can give us, wait. It makes us cling to him rather than to an outcome. God knows what I need, I do not. He sees the future I cannot. His perspective is eternal, mine is not. He will give me what is best for me when it is best for me. Amen? And if you just get that tonight, I'll be happy because, praise God, your life will change. Amen? You know, the dictionary definition of wait is uh, to allow time to go by. Isn't that true? You just watch. Some of you are feeling time is going by. Some of you ladies may be looking for a partner and you're saying, God, time is going by. My clock is going by. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, another uh, de definition of, of, of waiting is staying in one place without doing very much. Anyone feel like that spiritually? that you're praying, you're praising God, you're coming to KT or your network church, and, and it's like nothing's happening. And, and you think, God, where are you? Where are you? And uh, synonyms or related words to wait, block. How many feel blocked? 
life. Halt, shelter, stop, tarry, hang around. Rest, stand, linger, remain, stay behind. Defer, pause, slow down, postpone, deferral, detainment. All of these are synonymous, all these are related words to wait. And they're not words that most of us like. I certainly don't. And my wife, my lovely wife will tell, tell you, Debbie over there, hallelujah. Be married 30 years very shortly in the next <laughs> August. And we got married here in this church, praise God. And I met Debbie here, hallelujah. And she's got to test me about that and uh, praise God. Friends, God wants us to wait for specific reasons. Number one, maturity. Waiting for the Lord will test you and develop your faith. And it's incredible how mature you and I will develop in God when you wait. Two months, six months, a year, five years, ten years, twenty years. Some of you have been waiting for more than twenty years for your breakthrough. Thirty years, forty years. God, how long? And you know what? That will develop your character. In James 1 verse 2 it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And waiting for God will test you. Waiting for God will develop your walk, will develop you in your maturity with Christ. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Hallelujah. Maturity. God wants us to be mature. Amen. He wants KT people and Living Waters people and all those under my sound of my voice. He wants us to be mature, to grow in him. Hallelujah. Not to be fickle-minded. Well, God, I haven't got my breakthrough today, so I'm leaving this church, or I'm leaving my cell, I'm going somewhere else. You're, you're solid, you're steadfast, you're, you're, uh, you're going to stay. If you're married, you're not going to suddenly say, give up, oh, my wife's this, or my husband's this, and I'm just going to leave because I'm tired. Sometimes work. God has placed some of you in work for a, pur for a purpose, all of you in a work for purpose, but you know... Um, some of us are so keen for career progressment that we just stay, well, I'm going to stay here for one year, two years. But you know what? God has a different agenda. I remember in my previous life, as it were, in, in, when I was full-time work outside of the church, and, uh, you know, I, I said to the Lord, I've had enough of my boss, had enough, and I'm, I'm leaving. And I had, to, I, I had to learn the hard lesson, as my wife, my wife will tell you, uh, I, you know, I was there for 10 years. Can you believe it? I resigned three times. And, uh, and, the Lord, and it was a very good job, interesting job, very, very good, well paid and everything. But, you know, the boss was a complete nightmare. <laughs> I'm sure none of you have guys uh, or bosses like that, but I had. And, uh, and the Lord said to me, start praying for him. And I said, I don't want to pray for him. The prayers that I would be praying for him would not be very edifying. <laughs> but the Lord said, no, you stay. When, I, when you leave, you leave with honour. When you leave with my blessing, you leave when you, in the right spirit. And it took 10 years, and by that time, it was the right, the right time when I left, and, the, and my boss was all, almost begging me to stay, and, and I was left for, to join the ministry, the full-time ministry in the church. And... But I had to learn, learn those lessons. And friends, you need to learn those lessons as well if you're not learning. Your life is not your own. If you're born again by the Spirit of God, God has called you in your work. You stay there until he gives you the green light. Amen? Amen? Amen. We need to be men and women of integrity. We need to be men and women who learn maturity and get that perspective. Secondly, teachability and meekness. My goodness, waiting for the Lord requires a submissive, teachable heart. And you and I, we have to align our wills to the Lord's perfect will for our lives. For example, Moses, the Bible says he was the meekest man in the world. 
Numbers 12, verse 3. Why do you think he was meek? He was in Egypt. He was a prince of Egypt, or one of them, for 40 years. He had the best education. He was, the Bible says that he was well eloquent, even though he gave the excuse to God, I'm not, I can't speak this and can't that. He was well educated. He had all the privileges of being a prince in Egypt. And Egypt at that time was a superpower. So you can imagine, he knew that he had a destiny and he took matters in his own hands and killed one of the Egyptian slave, uh, slave taskmasters. And he got thrown out. Guess why he was meek? God had to get rid of the pride, the arrogance, the self-reliance and teach him, teach him in the desert for 40 long years. Years. Can you imagine? The Bible says the Egyptians uh, despised shepherds. Guess what? He ended up being a shepherd. The very things that you and I despise, God will actually, could actually put you in that. So be careful what you look down on. Be careful what you look down. Never look down on someone who's a cleaner or someone who, who you think, you know, are, are much better than them. Because God could put you in that place very easily. Meekness. Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. There is a blessing in being meek. Gentle, but meek. He had to learn that strength and character in the desert. And that is why you and I need to be in that place. We will learn meekness and teachability. Strength. When we wait for the Lord, we admit how inadequate we are without him. When you are struggling with waiting for God for the breakthrough. Sometimes we can just be at our wit's ends and say, God, what's going on? I can't do this. But the Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Your strength will be renewed as you wait and seek his face and seek his strength. Say, God, I need your strength. I need your power to help me through this time while I'm waiting for my breakthrough. Amen? For some of us, it could be a few more years. Others, it could be hopefully just around the corner. Amen? Amen. I'm sure all of us are in a waiting room to some extent. There's always some things that we need and break and, and things are like blocked, isn't there? That's, let's be honest. So if you... Get married, and that's one of the things that you're getting needing the breakthrough. There'll be other breakthroughs that you'll need, or financial breakthrough, whatever it is. We all are in that waiting room to some extent. And when you rely on the Lord for strength, He will help you. It will help you. And suffering, something we don't like as charismatics, Pentecostals, but it's true. We need to understand and read the whole of the scripture. There is much suffering in following Jesus Christ. Much suffering. When you have to wait for law, there it's a degree of suffering, isn't it? Suffering can help us identify with those around us. Suffering can help us identify with people in pain, emotional pain, people who've lost everything. And often the Lord draws closest to us in the darkest times in our lives. And that's why he uses suffering. Because God has a different perspective to you and me. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 5, the Apostle Paul says, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, overflowing, that's what the word abounds. How many want to abound in suffering? I, I don't know any hands on